The following program is intended for mature audiences. Hey, what's up? This is Knife. Hopefully everybody's having a good day today. Today's story comes from us from an ex-U.S. Special Forces member regarding a mission he was part of back in the early 1990s. In the early 90s, I was with the teams in the Navy. We were sanctioned by an alphabet government agency to put a stop to several aggressive Sasquatch in the high country in western North Carolina. We all thought it was a joke at the mission briefing, but it was no joke. My partner in our team of 12 was my swim buddy. He was Native American. This man wasn't scared of anything. Before we were ordered to go out, during the briefing, all these agents were showing us slides of what these creatures did to people, adults and children alike, as well as the damage done to vehicles and homes. Anyway, my buddy turned white with sheer fear. He told me this is bad, really bad. When we arrived in the little mountain village town, the sheriff met us. He told us that he'd never been so happy to see the cavalry since we'd been in Korea. He showed us the actual places where, as he put it, this is where those fuckers, those big hairy demons, destroyed this or killed him or her or them or there. My buddy was taking everything in like I never saw him before. After talking with the sheriff, our lieutenant told us to fire up because we're going hunting. As we were getting our gear ready, my buddy said to me, You know, I always thought my grandfather was just telling me scary stories about he and his brothers when they fought these wild men. We started in around 1,400 hours. By 1,600 hours, we found lots and lots of tracks. We started tracking them. We made out at least seven different individuals. We made first contact at around 1930 hours, and it was almost dark. The point man stopped dead in his tracks and spoke into his headset. I see one! It's fucking huge! The lieutenant said, If you have the shot, take it! He shot this massive hairy beast with a 7.62 millimeter round, and it acted like a mosquito bit him. This creature turned around and let out a god-awful roar. Our point man quickly switched to full auto. This time the creature dropped like a rock after 10 7.62 millimeter rounds cut up his chest. After first contact, the agents radioed in and said, They want one alive. Our lieutenant told them to go screw themselves. It took three days and nights with almost zero sleep, but we dropped seven of those hairy bastards. We found the missing people, or rather what was left of them, we had one casualty when a team member was actually snatched straight up into a tree. There was nothing anyone could have done for him. To this day, thinking of those three days sends chills down my spine. You won't find those three days in any military record or mission log. Going into our mission to briefing, where normally we were asked a thousand and one questions about every shot fired, every angle we fired from, every angle we fired on, etc., etc., we were simply told that the past three days were doing we were doing rigorous mountain training and during that training period we lost a man. And with that, the debriefing team stood up and walked out. Now normally we have individual debriefing for the whole team, but this was the one and only time it was... So to answer your next question, after three days, the government agents came in and removed all seven corpses and flew them out, never to be seen or heard of again.